<laughs> All right. Always got to have a little jam in there. But hey, stay tuned mm -hmm. for some great alternatives for things you can do while you're at home in the next couple of weeks. Um, there's going to be some books. Please stay tuned for that in case you're a reader. I'd love your take on some good, uh, good series. There's going to be some pickling and some peppers and some art. But uh, stay tuned and enjoy. Thanks for tuning in. All right, so another great option for something to do while you're indoors during this time is some artwork. Let me show you some of the things I've done. My biggest issue is coming up with an original idea. Now that's an original idea. That's a watercolor. Here's another one I did a couple of weeks ago. I guess Freud would probably like to get a kick out of that or he's get his hands on it. I don't know what's going on there, but you just draw whatever's in, happens to be in your, your mind uh, and give it a go because you never know. I really like that ice cream one. I think that's a ton of fun. Um, but an original idea is what's hardest for me to come up with. This is a ripoff of one we saw in Tahoe, but you know, what the heck? I'll give it some spin. I'll do my own version of it. Here's a fish. That was an original. There's one, kind of screwed up the pinky, but uh, that's okay. This other one up here, also not my idea, ripped that off of a picture I saw in a gallery on a cruise ship, believe it or not. Um, this one just did last week or so, and I liked it well enough to uh, frame it. Tore the paper up a bit. Um, I like that one. And you never know. And the frame cost me a buck and a half at the thrift store. And this one my mother-in-law did. She's great. And there's my puppy. He's great too. But, um, so some artwork. You never know what you might come up with. And uh, just like writing a song or writing a story, you draw a bunch of them. And you keep one or two for every five that you throw out. But give it a shot, you know. Sometimes you end up with some stuff that's pretty interesting. And uh, you never know. You might end up being a real artiste. So give that a shot. Another great option is to can some peppers. Now you might think this takes a lot of work, but it really doesn't. And once you get it done, once you do it a few times... It uh, really doesn't take that long at all. Basically, you want to go to the store, grab yourself some carrots, jalapenos, and a sweet onion, or white onion, if you prefer. One tip on cutting these jalapenos up is to wear some gloves. And as you cut them up, have a garbage bowl beside you. And if you want milder peppers, pop the seeds out of the rounds you finish cutting, like you can see there, and then collect your pieces You'll need about one carrot per jar, five to six jalapenos per jar, and one large onion to divide among three jars or so. And then you can do whatever you like too. This time I'm making this one with extra heavy onions on top. I did two more in the pot already with no onions to see what that's like. Last week we did some with a hard boiled egg right in the middle. And that was a ton of fun. I'm looking forward to seeing what that looks like. Anyway, you have your large spaghetti pot. And I have all my jars already built. There's a quarter cup of garlic in the bottom of each one. One carrot, but you could do two carrots. And then five or six jalapenos per. And over here we have our hot brine recipe, which is five cups of canning vinegar, one cup of water, a quarter cup of sugar, and three teaspoons of salt. And you don't really want to play with that at all. Leave that as is because it works really well just like that. Now, you can use a ladle to pour this in. Or if you have a pour pot, you can just be careful and start filling up your jars. This is actually a four-jar recipe for the vinegar. The brine recipe is actually meant for four jars. But I find doing four jars at a time is a bit much because you need to eat this, eat these when they are about four weeks old, between four and six weeks old. Earlier than four weeks and they aren't quite pickled yet. Um, later than six weeks, they start to get soft. Anyway, this has to be hot. The brine has to be hot. I'll bring this water up to a boil and make sure my brine 
and jars are nice and hot. I use spaghetti sauce jars. I think it's Classico. Any of them that have this type of lid instead of the real thin type lid. This is a nice lid. You can also use a regular canning lid, but I use these three or four times, making sure everything is clean and I'm still able to get a really good seal. So I'll use, three or four, use them three or four times before moving to a traditional canning ring like this. All right, so this is one that's all made up. It's dated 4-1, so we're just about, just about ready to start eating this one, maybe in the next, this weekend or next week. Get these all hot, then pull them out, put your lids on nice and tight, and then let them all sit. And at the end, as they cool, you'll hear these, this lid start to pop. You'll hear lids pop, and that's because the vacuum's being created and that lets you know you have a good seal and the peppers will stay good and fresh. If, when you go to grab a jar to eat it, if the top bounces like this, then you've lost the seal and you might want to throw the whole thing out. All right, so I'll put the recipe in the description, but this is another good option to take up your time while we are being quarantined. All right, so another great thing you can do is to get into a really good book series. Now, I'm particularly stoked about books. I um, am an avid re reader. Um, and so let's just get right to it. Been reading for a while. I didn't really start reading fiction until I was an adult. Prior to that, I read tech books and uh, read for knowledge. I've uh, read a lot of science books, a lot of religious books, a lot of theology, eschatology origins, this versus that, etc., etc. But let me set you up with some good books. And then also tell me, because I'm always you know, on the on search for a great series, more uh, gritty detective stories is kind of my thing. So if you have a, a lead on a good series, let me know, because a lot of these have 20 or so plus books, and I've read them all in the last few years. And so now finding a good series is just like, wow, that's gold at the end of the rainbow. So, all right, in no particular order, but saving a couple of the best ones for last. The J.D. Robb series, the In Death series, is very good. Uh, very gritty, but it's raw, but it's good. Uh, someone new, fairly new on the scene, Linda Castillo, um, the Kate Burkholder series is exceptional. It's about a girl who was an Amish, raised an Amish girl, and then she uh, gets kicked, gets banned, banished from the Amish community and uh, de de decides to become a detective. It's really good, so check that one out. Of course, the Craig Johnson Longmire series is really good. Uh, it's a Western and different than the TV series, especially the early Longmire books, but they're, they're good. They're kind of the, the kind of book you'd find in an airport uh, bookstore. Also the CJ Box Joe Pickett series, uh, there's probably 20 or so, 22 in that series, and it's good. It's worth a read. About a game warden in Wyoming. Owen Lockinen is somewhat new to the scene, and he has a series which starts with The Professionals, and it's really good. Worth checking out, so I recommend that one. Owen Lockinen, L-A-U-K-K-A-N-E-N. -E First book in this series is The Professionals, and it, uh, it reads real well. All right, now one of the best books I've ever read is by Patrick Lee called Runner. And Patrick Lee did some writing early on. He has a good science fiction trilogy. Uh, and then he put out Runner, which was just fantastic. Um, but it's been very quiet since, so I don't know what he's been up to. Um, but it's, it's great. So check it. If you haven't read Runner, check it out. You won't quit reading it until it's done. It's so good. Uh, the Bosch series by Michael Connolly is good, although I find the books earlier in the series uh, were better. His later, later books um, lack something of to just get up and go and get into the story. There's so much detail in the office work and how he opened the folder and how he went to the file cabinet. And, um, I like Michael Connolly. I love the Bosch series on Amazon, especially after having read all the books because I knew the idiosyncrasies of Bosch's character, and I thought they did a really good job of portraying that in the TV series. Uh, so really like that. I think it's cast really well. Titus Oliver is great. Um, I like the first season the best, because it was a little more gritty, a little more mature, mature in theme, 
Uh, but it's good. I'll stick with it. I'm always excited when a new Bosch, series, uh, Bosch season opens up. And then uh, the last one and my most favorite of all is the Lucas Davenport series by John Sanford. There's probably 24 books in that series. And it's been such a joy to get to know Lucas Davenport. And if they ever cast, they have done a movie, but it was a failure years and years ago. If they were ever to do a series again, I would want to cast the detective from the Lost Horizon series, or the, uh, what is it, The Expanse? Maybe it's The Expanse on Amazon, the science fiction. The guy that plays the uh, detective in that series is uh, perfect for Lucas Davenport. All right, so John Sanford. All right, so there you have it. Do some... Um, pickling of peppers for a fun family activity. Um, of course, you can work out it, you can do an instrument, you can learn something new like that, but try your hand at some art as well. And then check out this series, this list of really good book series, and get into some casual reading for enjoyment. Instead of always reading for academics or knowledge, take a chance on some of these and just read for an escape. It's good. And then if you have um, you know, a line on something that's really gritty and worthwhile, detective murder mystery, something like that, please let me know. I'll be sure and check it out. Till next time, old guy is out.